Salutations, uh, respected viewers. I am George from Ireland. And this video is about what's going on in Venezuela right now. So I've been watching it um, for a keen eye, uh, with a keen eye for some time, the situation in the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. President Maduro is clinging on there. There was a disputed election some time ago. He was a putative winner of that one. And Juan Guaido uh, was the opposition candidate. And about 40 governments around the world have recognized Guaido, I hope I pronounced his name properly, as the, as the legitimate winner. When Capriles stood against um, Maduro several years ago, again, some people saying, oh, really, Capriles won, despite Capriles actually having conceded himself. Anyway, so Maduro presides over a socialist government, which is not to say that there's no private ownership whatsoever, but he is avowedly socialist. Um, and uh, he's the successor to Hugo Chavez. And between Maduro and Chavez, they, they, they've run that, that country for about 20 years. Now, I'm an anti-socialist, as anybody who watches my uh, channel will know, which is not to say that I think that socialism is always, in every way, a disaster. Sometimes it is. There have been horrific socialist, or more accurately, communist leaders. There have been genocidal, savage tyrants. So, yeah, it's certainly been cataclysmic uh, and dystopian sometimes. Um, but Venezuela seemed to be a case where, certainly in the early years, it was quite successful. And they'd reduced the poverty rate, and they provided health care to people who had never had it before by getting Cuban doctors in, and of course they're both Spanish-speaking countries, so communicating with the patients was no problem, there's no language barrier, and um, they gave free oil to Cuba in lieu of the doctor's services and so on, so um, everybody was a winner from that, really. Um, uh, and so there was, there was some significant progress in the early years. Of course, the wealthy didn't like it, as they tended to be, to be taxed more than they had been previously. I know Venezuela had been racked by very high crime rates, often to do with the narco gangs, uh, in the 90s, uh, got the situation got a bit better under Chavez. I didn't really like Chavez's grandstanding, him who was cozying up to Ahmadinejad, um, and he was very hostile to George W. Bush, saying Bush was genocidal, less human than a snake. Now, of course, the United States government can't really talk on this issue since they are certainly um, very cozy with um, some despots around the world. As part of their war on terror, they're certainly willing to turn Nelson's eye to very grave abuses by people they find useful. But, you know, that's politics. Well, that's war compromises are always made. Such and such a country is a strategic, strategic location. This is our air bridge into Afghanistan. Therefore, we're going to overlook their wrongdoing and our moral principles will get out the window. Anyway, so Chavez died ooh, about six years ago. Maduro succeeded him. Uh, and that's that. Now, the U.S. government has been openly hostile to Chavez and Maduro. In 2002, there was a, there was a sort of a potential coup or a failed coup anyway. And some people in the Republican Party in the USA were cheering it on. There was even a well-known American uh, right-wing pastor, I can't remember which one, who called for the assassination of Hugo Chavez, which is an extraordinary thing to do. Now, Chavez, though his um, uh, fiery rhetoric had been against the Yankees, um, as they would have called them, um, he didn't actually propose doing anything to the United States. He had a fairly cordial relationship with many of his neighbors, including Cuba. And when I was in Cuba, it's quite a few, not Cuba, well, Cuba as well, sorry, it was in Jamaica, um, people spoke very warmly of him there. Um, I, that was just a straw poll. I couldn't really uh, do a proper survey. Um, anyway, so now there's an economic crisis. It's been going on for some time, and it's got worse. So they've really plumbed the depths there. There's hyperinflation, and the, the country seems to be scarcely functioning. I know people are complaining about food shortages. <laughs> this is a very unscientific way to judge it, but they don't seem malnourished to me, just seeing images of plenty of people on television. No doubt there are some people who are mal malnourished. So perhaps the situation is exaggerated, but I don't think people would claim they're short of food when they're not, and medicines. And so lots of people want to bring in free food. Socialists ought to be in favor of free food, not really care who, who wants it. And Maduro is saying there is no paucity of comestibles in the country. Well, you know, if there was so much provender, I don't know why anyone would want to deliver extra food and medicines. So you just let it in. Food is just food. Why would you care whether it's free or it's paid for? Talk about overreach of his executive power and said the army there to stop food coming in and even stop people going out who want to work abroad. So it seems to me Maduro's really lost the plot. Um, what, what, a, what a deranged de despot uh, saying it's all an American plot and blah, blah, blah. And I do hear that rumor from some from people. Anywhere, anything that goes wrong, it's always... Um, this evil uh, American conspiracy. There's always the mighty dollar behind it and Wall Street's machinations. Their tentacles are felt everywhere. Now, um, that's largely crazy. 
but it's not always nonsense. Occasionally, yes, the United States is instigating things. In this particular case, I suspect not. Actually, Trump hardly talks about Venezuela. It's not really on his radar screen. And, you know, Maduro is a sort of authoritarian leader, um, like Kim Jong-un, not as bad as Kim Jong-un, for whom Trump would have a soft spot, you'd think. They could kiss and make up. So I think Maduro has made a huge strate strategic mistake because there are massive street protests. Just let the food in and that's that. Now, crucially, the military is staying on his side. Remember, his predecessor, Chavez, was a military man. And, oh, we must defend democracy. That's a little rich, bearing in mind that his idol, Hugo Chavez, he attempted to overthrow the government by force in 1992, spent several years in jail for it. Shows that they were actually very lenient. So I think they should just let the food in, and then the food situation would calm down and people would no longer be so furious. Most people aren't intensely political, they're mostly fairly apolitical. And so if they're just not hungry and they're not furious, then that would really take the edge off the situation. Maybe not some people would support Guaido, and that's that. Interestingly, he let Guaido leave. He could have slung him in jail for something or other. So we think we should do that. Anyway, we mustn't forget that um, President Maduro, he does have support from the Chinese and various other governments around the world, the Iranians, anyone who's fairly anti-US, that is, um, an important trade deal. So he's not friendless. Will he ride out the storm or will he fall? It's difficult to say. At the moment, he's managed to hang on by his fingertips. So um, it's got to be resolved one or the other. If the army withdraws support, well, I suppose he's finished. He does have some true believers, some people who are absolutely committed to his cause and who claim they're willing to lay down their lives for him. But anyway, it seems to me that he's, he's lost touch with the reality. He's spinning out of control and um, uh, refuting things which are provable on television, such as um, a uh, shortage of food. Well, there we are. I hope the situation is resolved um, well. And what really went wrong with the economy? I suppose maybe just overspending. The people have been complaining about creeping totalitarianism for years. There's been this incipient takeover of the media and so on. So everyone says, I'm not quite sure how much tr truth there is in that. I mean, I'm not ideologically inclined towards Maduro and Chavez, but as I say, even I have to take my hat off to them for some genuine success in some of their anti-poverty schemes. But unfortunately, um, it's, this seems to have led to a degradation of democracy. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't always happen that way. But in this particular case, it has. And there's obviously been grave economic mismanagement. Now, I know for um, ultra-capitalists will try to use this to try and say, ah, oh, any attempt to uh, reduce pauperism is foredoomed to end in calamity, which isn't the case. But in this particular case, it's gone very badly wrong.